I had a question from one of my mastermind group clients about breathing and talking to new clients. Like, do you address breathing? Do you bring up breathing with every new client? And honestly, probably yeah, to some extent. Some people I talk about it more than others, and some people, if I feel like they're just not drinking my Kool-Aid that day, then I'll go do something really generic like squat bench deadlift because arguably that's telling me as much as I need to know for a general fitness client, right? That how coachable are you? How fit are you? How fatigued do you get? How easily does that fatigue come on? All sorts of stuff, right? And I can just jumpstart into training. I can give you a training stimulus or I can start to teach you the patterns that I want you to know. Now, okay, so let's say they are kind of drinking my Kool-Aid. How do we get to that position? Well, if someone comes in and they're complaining of mobility limitations, then that's when I'm kind of bringing it up a little bit heavier than other people. I'll bring them through just a general movement assessment and general just watch their joints move. How how much can you rotate? How well do you do it? What sort of compensations do you do? And then after all that, I have basically the same explanation. I just say, so breathing's really important because without oxygen you die in like five minutes. And if we if we if I took off and I looked into your insides and I took out some of your guts, but I was comparing side to side, you like we look symmetrical. We got two hands, two eyes, two nose holes, whatever. But on the inside, we're not really that symmetrical. Like your your liver is way bigger than your spleen, and your liver's all the way over on the right, and your spleen's on the left. So with this, and keeping in mind that breathing is really important, it gets easier to breathe in certain positions because you have this big breathing muscle here in the middle of your body that's bigger on one side than it is on the other, and it makes it easier to breathe when you're over here sitting on your right side. So I can predict the way some of your tests will come out, and you fit right into that pattern. Uh, what I'd like to do now is give you some exercises to see if we can kind of clear some of that up because it'll just let us do cooler stuff over in the gym. Does that sound okay with you? And that's, you know, that's my basic spiel. Um, that's pretty much the depth that I'll go into people. I really don't like telling people that they have breathing problems. And I'm, I'm more cognizant now than I used to be because we've all made mistakes <laughs> about even not explicitly saying that, but implicitly saying that with my behavior. Like, no, 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 you're doing it wrong. I want people to understand when they're doing things wrong, and I'll say, okay, that was really good, but try again. I, I need you to exhale a little bit longer. I want you to sigh out. I want you to pause after you exhale. Whatever the cue that they may need is, I can have that conversation with them. But it's always, well, not always, but it's usually in the context of, some other exercise, and it's always in the context of some greater goal, because ultimately we're in the service industry. I need you to be okay with what I'm doing, and I, I want you to achieve your goals. So I'm, I'm just trying to find the best way to do that. That's basically my thoughts on talking about breathing with new clients. Uh, don't force anything if you're not comfortable giving that explanation. If you are comfortable, feel free to steal mine. I, I don't care. You'll end up like changing it around so that it fits your personality and yourself. Um, if you have any other questions, maybe other suggestions, maybe you want to tell me how you explain breathing to your clients, just leave them in the comments below. And as always, don't forget to smash that like button.